One of the many topics touched on here at the conference in Denver is unconventional plays. It's all about the petroleum system, and the gentleman who was talking about that today is Harris Kander, and you're with Unconventional Resources and Fluids with BP. Uh, yes. So tell us a little bit about your speech. Well, the theme of my talk was uh, concerning the role that petroleum systems plays in understanding unconventional reservoirs and resources. And in a nutshell, when we say petroleum systems, what we're really talking about is the rocks, the fluids, and the burial history of the rocks, and the importance of understanding the integration of all those things in order to find the best parts of a play fairway. And how has that changed over the years? Well, in a lot of ways. I think early on with unconventionals, we were drilling for gas because gas prices were high and it was profitable to do so. When we were looking just for gas, such as the Barnett Shale, the Fayetteville Shale, the Woodford Shale, and this would be before mid, the middle of 2008 when gas prices dropped, uh, the questions were mostly about the rock uh, and organic content of the rock and the maturity of the rock. It was a little less focused on fluid properties. And then when gas prices fell in mid-2008, companies couldn't drill the gas nearly as profitably, so they started looking for quote-unquote liquids, which would be a liquid phase in the reservoir or a vapor phase in the reservoir that has high liquid content. So they were looking for oil or condensate. And once that happened, then the companies were looking for a more viscous fluid, and the fluid properties became much, much more important to understand, and so did reservoir pressure. And once you start talking about having to understand the rock, and the fluid properties and reservoir pressure, that is really what petroleum systems is all about. So at the end of the day, we start asking questions about mobility of fluids in these very, very tight rocks that we call unconventional reservoirs. And when you talk about fluid mobility, that's when you really have to understand rock properties, fluid properties, and how they've changed over geologic time. So you're looking at the same areas then and seeing how you can maximize uh, the resource and get it out of the oil, uh, out of the ground. As always, that's that's what the industry does, and uh, especially in North America, where it is a very very mature petroleum province. What we've learned is that these uh, these great basins just continue to give up play after play after play, uh, mostly because we've got technology that allows us to do so. Now, technology is the big lever, and in, in this case long lateral wells that we're able to stimulate properly. Uh, but it's still, it, it's not a, a silver bullet where you ignore the geology. You still have to understand the subsurface, the rocks and the fluids. So you're finding new areas of, of potential development right now w with unconventionals. I, I imagine that's going to just keep getting bigger and bigger, isn't it? Well, it's, it's gotten huge in the U.S. and in Canada, and we're starting to see it get bigger globally. Uh, it's it's going to take some time because one of the advantages of the, of the U.S. and Canada has been that the basins where we're developing unconventional resources are basins where we've had a tremendous amount of infrastructure, pipelines, so takeaway capacity, and we've got markets for v the various products, uh, not just uh, gas and oil, but also uh, different uh, spreads on those, such as uh, propane, going to propylene uh, plants. So we've got an infrastructure in North America that doesn't always exist globally, and that makes it difficult. It's, it's very difficult to have unconve unconventional uh, resources developed in a remote area that doesn't have a lot of infrastructure in it to begin with. Mm -hmm. You, we've heard a lot about peak oil over the past number of years. Mm -hmm. This is obviously going to change all of that, isn't it? Yes, it, it does. Uh, the, the, uh, the concept of peak oil uh, made some assumptions ab about the types of reservoirs we were producing and the volumes of oil in those reservoirs. And what the unconventional world has done is said, well, those actually aren't the only reservoirs out there. There are a lot of reservoirs with uh, huge reservoirs with enormous volumes of of oil and gas and now we can produce that oil and gas it, it may not be as, as economic as some of the big easy uh, conventional reservoirs that we've found over the past hundred years but it's there nonetheless and we've obviously seen the u.s has increased oil production in the past couple of years uh, to levels we really never thought we, we we thought we had long since uh, 
hit our peak in the U.S. for, for oil production, and we were wrong. Harris, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. We've been chatting with Harris Kander with BP.